anyway. Uh, so while I reboot my computer, we're going to look briefly at the other big text editor called Vim. I'm not a Vim user. I know way less about Vim than I know about Emacs. This is why we just spent an hour on Emacs and we spent the next 10 minutes on Vim. Um, that's not to say that Vim isn't a good text editor. Um, it's not a good text editor, but there are people that think it is, and a lot of people use it a lot. Uh, so consider it. You just learned a lot about Emacs. I probably made Emacs users all of all of you now because all of these editors have learning curves, and once you devote the time in one, you never switch to anything else. Um, the reason people like Vim over Emacs is, unlike Emacs, Vim does not have Tetris, and sometimes that's a good thing, right? If you're working on a little tiny microcontroller, Emacs takes up a lot of space. You may not be able to fit Emacs in your microcontroller's memory. Vim, on the other hand, much lighter weight. It's just a text editor. Um, it'll fit in much smaller places where Emacs won't fit. Uh, other people like Vim because it's what they learned. Uh, it's a it's pretty different from Emacs. Um, although, Emacs, true to form, has a Vim mode where you can actually use all the Vim commands in Emacs. Uh, I think you get to it by doing Control X and typing in evil. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm not kidding. <laughs> but if you are a Vim user and you want to use Emacs, you can put Emacs into Vim mode and all the regular Vim commands will actually work in Emacs. Vim has no Emacs mode, right? Because it doesn't have Tetris either, and that's just the way it works. Uh, but people do like Vim. If you remote into any Unix server anywhere in the world, it probably has Vim. Or at least it has VI, which is an older version of Vim. Vim is VI improved, so VI Um So Vim is available everywhere. It's good to know how to do at least the bare minimum of Vim, because sometimes you'll be on some other system and Emacs isn't installed with Vim is. Uh, that said, you know, Vim is not the editor that I'm going to write in code in, so I will be able to show you a little bit of Vim, and if you want to learn more, you're going to have to go and get online and look up the myriad of other YouTube videos that go over how great Vim is. Uh, also, I keep making derogatory remarks about Vim. That's just because I'm an Emacs user. You can actually go to Wikipedia and type in Editor Wars, and there's like a 500-word entry on the big fight between Emacs. Like, it's a thing. Um, I'm not kidding. You'll go to like CS conferences and get beat up for hanging out with the wrong group of users if you're not one of them. It's weird, but it's a thing. <coughs> Okay. So I froze my computer again. This is getting comical. I should just teach Vim on the board. Uh, so Vim is what we call a moded editor. So whereas Emacs, we were almost, we're essentially always in one mode, right? Unless we're in the middle of typing in a command, we are in the typing mode, where you can start editing a file. You can use the arrow keys to move around. If you type, it edits the file. Vim doesn't work that way. Uh, by default, when you open Vim, you're in what's called like a master mode, where essentially all of your keys on your keyboard are a command. You can't just start typing, because that's just going to be entering a bunch of commands. If you want to start typing, you have to go into the insert mode, which then makes your keyboard work like a normal keyboard. You might be getting an inkling of why I don't use Vim. Um, this has a little bit of overhead, being you have to remember what mode you're in, because what a key does changes depending upon your mode, right? So if you think you're in one mode, but you're actually in a different mode, and you try to use a key, it may do something entirely different from what you expect. I find this incredibly confusing. Vim users consider this a good time. Um, but we will get through that. Vim, like Emacs, is, I mean, like I said, it's installed in more places than Emacs. OSX should have a copy of Vim as well. Um, Vim and VI are pretty closely related. Vim, some of the stuff we're doing tonight only works in Vim, but the general concepts all work in VI. Uh, the biggest difference that we're looking at tonight is in Vim you can use the arrow keys to move the cursor around, in VI you can. Vim was designed to really be optimized for people that are good touch typers. Um, so when you're in command mode where you would normally rest your keys on the keyboard, the home row essentially is all of the commands you would normally need to use. So Vim allows you to scroll using the arrow keys, but that's not what most Vim users actually do. You can actually scroll using your right hand. So H, J, K, and L allow you to move the cursor. It's H is left, J is right, K is up, and L is down. Um, so most Vim users, I mean, again, we're getting into slightly less intuitive territory, at least what I think, but Vim users will use that to move around. They won't use the arrow keys. They will just, you know, they're keeping their hands on the home row all the time. That's how they're moving around. It's apparently very fast. Uh, I'm not going to edit, but we will show that. 
So the command open vim is what you would expect. It is vim. So we open vim. The I improved. You get another nice home screen. Fortunately, it gives you a little bit of information on the bottom, which is good because otherwise I wouldn't have exit vim uh, whenever I open them on some other machine. So right now we're in, like I said, what's called like the master command mode. I'm not going to start typing because it would probably get me into some obscure vim sub mode, and I have no way of getting back out. Uh, this has screwed me up so many times. You open them, you start typing, and all of a sudden you're like 17 moves deep and you don't know where you are. Um, to exit them, which is all anyone should be doing in them, is you type in, like it says here, colon followed by a Q. And that'll exit up them. In all seriousness, if we actually want to start editing a file in them, um, the command to start editing a file, you need to go into insert mode. To get into insert mode, you have to hit the I on the keyboard. So now we're no longer in the command mode. We're in the mode where I can just start typing. You will notice that uh, in this mode, the H, J, K, and L keys type H, J, K, and L. But if I exit the insert mode, so now if I want to go back to, so the workflow in Vim is you go into insert mode, you type in everything you want. When you're ready to do a command, you have to exit back out of insert mode. To exit, you hit escape. Uh, and in general, to exit out of any mode in Vim, you just keep hitting escape until you get back to it not saying anything at the bottom. You'll notice before it said insert. Now when I hit escape, go home, it no longer says insert. Now if I type H, J, K, and L, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, meaning it's moving the cursor around the screen, right? Um, that quick command I did, so where you do a lot of commands in Vim, get started by doing a colon followed by some letter or something. That only works when you're not in insert mode. So I'm going to go back into insert mode, right? Let's say I want to insert a line. I'm going to hit I again. Now I'm back in insert mode. I can start typing. But now if I do a colon, it's a colon, right? It's not a command. So if I want to actually quit them, first I have to hit escape. That takes me out of insert mode. Then I can do colon Q. And it's stopping me from exiting for the same reason Emacs was, right? I have a file I've edited and I haven't saved it. Um, if I want to, so press enter, type command, continue. So if I just hit enter, it's not going to exit. If I had done an exclamation point, it would have forced it to exit. If I want to save this file first, the command is W. So W for write. So if I do a W, it's going to say no file name. Um, well, and being then, it's not going to give me a place to enter a file name. Colon W space file name. What did you say? Colon W space file name. Dollar. Colon W. Okay. Space, space file name. name. Good. See, I'm glad you're here. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have known how to save my file in them. So I'm just going to call this file test. Good. And now it's saves it. Um, like I said, not a Vim user, uh, but this does give you the, the biggest difference between Vim and Emacs is Vim has these modes. If you want to insert text, you have to go into insert mode. If you want to use commands, you have to be in the command mode. I find this enormously confusing because it requires a mental model where you are constantly tracking what mode you're in, and I'm not good at that. Uh, some people swear by this, uh, and, and it worked great for them. It's not for me. Um, so other commands you might want, uh, so again, copy and paste like we did before. So copy, as long as we're in command mode, so this, again, doesn't work in insert mode, but in command mode, uh, K is kill, or the same thing. Unlike in Emacs, it actually has a copy. So K by default does not erase the line, it just copies it. Y is paste again. Except this would work better if this actually worked. Do you know what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Um, fortunately, even better than I, most programs that have been installed have a program called Vim Tutor. You can either believe this is because the Vim programmers are nicer and they've written better documentation than Emacs, or you can believe because Vim is completely unusable without something like this. So if you launch the Vim Tutor command, it'll actually take you through a tutorial of all of the cool things you can do in Vim, uh, one thing at a time. So this is going over the HKLNJ. We can go figure out what I was doing wrong with cutting and pasting, right? So insert, text editing, pending, so on and so forth, and file. Da -da 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 -da. Let's figure out cut and paste eventually. I think it's the same thing. 
Is it just CMD? So it's CMD. So when you're when you're in Vim Tutor, this is actually a file open in Vim right now. So all of the regular Vim commands work, right? So if I go to I, I can start typing on top of the tutor itself. Um, so we can try that. If I do C. <laughs> so if I copy something and then come down here and I So I do a C. In theory, you learn how to use them. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that I'm not a Vim user and that my uh, experience with them is basically knowing how to exit it and occasionally knowing how to save a file and edit it, basically. Um, Vim can do most of the things. Emacs can do shorter playing Tetris. It can compile in Vim. You can all of that kind of jazz. There's ways to do that in Vim. Uh, there's lots of good Vim tutorials out there, far superior to the one that I just gave you, if you can even call it that. Um, again, if we wanted to close Vim Tutor, we would need to do, this time I don't mind about overriding the change. Well, okay, so you can also do WQ. This will save and quit, so you're just basically combining commands here, and that'll exit it out. So, Vim Tutor, if you actually do it one lesson at a time, does a pretty good job of taking you through all of the basics of Vim. Um, if you want to go beyond what the tutor gets into, it doesn't get into like compiling code and stuff like that, but you could look it up online. 